Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about a highly requested case that happened just recently in San Antonio, Texas. So if you guys don't know about San Antonio, Texas, or you have never been there, it is quite beautiful. I mean, there is a lot to do downtown. We have been there a few times. We ended up going there for one of my son's taekwondo tournaments. They have like a big center there. There is all kinds of stuff that you can do in San Antonio, Texas. They have a city walk where you can ride on a ferry day or night. They have the very famous historical place, the Alamo there that you can walk through and this is actually free. There's a big mall, there's movie theaters, lots of good food, and just plenty of stuff to do for the family. However, while researching, I did find that San Antonio, Texas also has one of the highest crime rates in the United States. So just like every other place, there's great parts and there's not so great parts. It just so happens that according to statistics, San Antonio has a lot of not so great parts. This brings me to 18 year old Savannah Soto and 22 year old Matthew Guerrera. The two of them young and in love were dating in San Antonio, Texas and Savannah was actually nine months pregnant and she was a week overdue with her first child who she was planning on naming Fabian. Everybody that knows Savannah and Matthew said that they were super excited to be parents. They were young, 18 and 22, but they were happy and they had a great support system. I seen all kinds of photos online that were posted by both of their families and both families seemed very happy to be welcoming this new baby. Savannah and Matthew said that they loved each other very much and they actually claimed to be ride or die for each other but it wasn't actually that simple between the two of them. Now there were rumors that they had some struggles in their relationship. Again, 18, 22, and there were people that knew them and that were around them that said that things could get a little, you know, out of hand at times. Savannah's family even said that Matthew had a history of doing things to Savannah that nobody approved of. And as a matter of fact, earlier in 2023, Matthew had actually pled guilty to an, a charge that was him and Savannah, if you know what I mean, or him against Savannah. And it was allegedly from an incident that occurred on Christmas day of 2022. And Matthew was even on probation for that incident. Savannah had actually really been going through a lot in 2023. Savannah and her family had recently and tragically lost her 15 year old brother, Ethan. Savannah's brother, Ethan, passed away on May 16th of 2022, apparently, uh, his passing was due to the revenge for a robbery that somebody believed that Ethan had committed. The San Antonio Police Department say that an 18-year-old young man named Victor Rives was mad at Ethan for actually stealing some THC from him, and so he used a girl to lure Ethan out of his home, and then once this girl lured Ethan out of his home, he used a firearm and ended Ethan's life. And again, he was 15 years old. And I don't know what all was going on on this side or this part of San Antonio, Texas, but allegedly before this happened with Ethan, uh, Ethan's mother, Gloria, and Savannah tried to meet up with this guy, Victor, to pay off her son's debt, but Victor allegedly refused. This young man, Victor, was arrested, and he did end up being charged with this crime against Ethan, and when he was in court, allegedly Savannah's family jumped on this guy right there in the courtroom, and it's all on video. It has actually been reported that Matthew, Savannah's 
boyfriend, the one who she was pregnant by, can also be seen in the video jumping on this guy, Victor. Now, even with all of that, it is obvious that this family is no stranger to tragedy, but after everything that had happened, none of them could be expecting what would be coming next. On Friday, December 22nd of 2023, Savannah was last seen around 2 p.m. at her apartment complex. She was reported to be in Matthew's gray 2013 Kia Optima. The next day, on December 23rd, Savannah was supposed to go to the hospital at 6.30 a.m. so she could be induced. However, she never showed up and she wasn't answering her phone. This is when Savannah's family really started to panic. And mind you guys, she was already a week overdue pregnant. Nobody hears from her. She does not show up at the hospital. Her family shows up there like ready to see this new baby boy be born and she's nowhere to be found. She's not answering her phone. So, of course, they're all freaking out. Now, later that evening, completely full of worry, Savannah's mother, Gloria, posted on Facebook asking for people to help find Savannah. And I just cannot imagine the concern of this mother, Gloria, for her daughter. She's been excited this whole time. They've done baby showers. She's ready to meet her new grandson. And then comes the weekend, and then comes Christmas Day. So, it is Christmas Day Nobody still has heard from Savannah and they're spending their entire Christmas day looking for Savannah and Matthew. They ended up putting up missing posters and everything and going around and knocking on doors and calling people, but yet nobody knew where they were. This is when the Texas Department of Public Safety ended up putting out a missing persons alert for Savannah and saying that they believed that she was in intimate danger. Then the following day on December 26th, just after 4 p.m., Two people were reported to be found deceased in Matthew's car. And his car was actually parked in the back of this like apartment complex. Now this was about three miles from where Savannah was last seen. And family members could even be heard just crying devastated at the scene. Now, even though the cops were there, that whole area had been roped off with yellow tape. The investigators initially told the media that the bodies had not been officially identified, but that they believed that they were Savannah's and Matthew's. The investigators also said that they believed that these bodies had been left in the car for about three or four days and that they were investigating the case as a possible homicide. The investigator did go on to say that the crime scene was very, very very complex and that it was perplexing. I believe that uh, it is the missing woman uh, and her boyfriend, but we can't confirm that right now officially until the, the medical examiner takes a look at the bodies and, and makes that determination as to their identity. But what we're looking at right now is a very, very perplexing crime scene. And detectives right now are looking at this as a possible murder. And, uh, but we don't know for sure. Then the very next day from that, the San Antonio Police Department announced that the case was a capital murder case and they listed three deceased victims. They listed Savannah Soto, her boyfriend, Matthew Guerrera, and their unborn child. And they also said that both of them had gunshot wounds. Now from here, things got wild online. I mean, again, Recap, you got the 18-year-old and the 22-year-old. Not the greatest behind-the-scenes rumors that were going on between them. I mean, even neighbors spoke out and said that they saw certain things. And But the two of them presented themselves as very much in love and were excited to bring this baby boy into the world. And then right before she's supposed to go into the hospital, she's found in a car with him and her, him, and the baby are all gone. Now, what I did not mention in the beginning of this video is when they were missing, originally tons of rumors were going out online and people were thinking that because of these behind the scenes rumors about Matthew and her, that this was actually a situation where they could have gotten to an argument and he took her life and then his own. That's what people were speculating at the time. And then in another update the following day, the medical examiner confirmed that both Savannah and Matthew were actually killed by gun 
shot wounds to their heads. They said that in Matthew's case, it was actually a contact wound meaning that the muzzle was held directly against Matthew's head. And then later that day, the San Antonio Police Department came out and they asked for the public's help in identifying two people of interest that were seen on surveillance footage at that apartment complex where the car was left and their bodies were found. In this surveillance footage, you can see the two vehicles pulling up next to each other. One is a Chevy truck, and the other is Matthew's Kia. When you watch this video, the driver of the truck can be seen getting out and handing something to the driver of the Kia. Then it appears that two people speak briefly before driving off in different directions. The video wasn't time stamped, but the police said that it was a few days before Matthew and Savannah were found in that Kia. And at that time, the police also said that they believed that Matthew and Savannah's lives were taken somewhere else. They believed that they were put into that car and brought to that area and just left there. The medical examiner did come out and officially ruled out that whole like rumor that it could have been a situation where Matthew took her life and then his own life. So he ruled that out and it couldn't have been done that way. Now everybody was looking at these videos, trying to figure out who these people were. And then in a shocking turn of events, on Wednesday, January 3rd, the San Antonio Police Department announced the rest of a father and a son in the killings of Savannah and Matthew and their unborn son. The people that were arrested were 19-year-old Christopher Persado and his father, who is 53-year-old Raymond Persado. Now, Christopher was charged with the actual taking of the lives of them, and Raymond was charged with a of a corpse and moving the bodies and concealing and, and other, their felony charges dealing with like the aftermath. The police would later say that when they took the two of them in, they actually confessed when they were questioned, but said that they were only acting in self-defense. Now, Christopher said that Savannah and Matthew actually drove to his home to sell him some green when Matthew allegedly, according to him, pulled out a weapon. Christopher said that he tried to wrestle Matthew for this weapon, but he ended up accidentally discharging it in the process. Christopher then allegedly told the police that they freaked out and they dragged Matthew and Savannah's bodies back into the car. And then that's when they abandoned them in Matthew's car at the apartment complex. The police also said that the reason why Raymond the father wasn't actually charged with the ending of the life is because they had no evidence to suggest that he was actually there when his son Christopher did this to Savannah and Matthew or that he knew beforehand that it was going to happen. But they did say that they could change their mind and come back and end up charging him with that later. The police also said that it will be up to the DA if later a third charge will be brought um, for the ending of the life of Fabian, the unborn child. And again, she was literally overdue. I mean, this was a full term baby. The San Antonio Police Department ended up doing a perp walk and it was live streamed on Facebook. And this is when they got video footage of Raymond, the father, and they kept asking him questions like, why did you do it? And all of this stuff. And this is when he ended up responding to the cameras saying that this was fake news and they knew that they were lying. You guys just watch this. Sorry? They want to know why. Why did you do it? You sorry? Did you do it? Why did you do it? Did you know she was pregnant? That is what you Huh? Did you, you need care? Why was it the whole family? Close to Christmas? Remorse? Anything? Why, man? Any remorse? You sorry? 
the chief scientist is lying about what you're saying. They don't know what's going on. Well, tell us. Make stuff up like tell us what's going on. Now, at this point, the investigators say that they are confident that Savannah and Matthew were already deceased and inside the car when Christopher and his father were caught on that surveillance camera footage that we watched. Now, this is because Savannah's cell phone was found on the side of her body, and this was actually very crucial to the investigators to tracing back to the crime scene, which is what led the police directly to that security video. The truck that was in that security video then led the investigators straight to Raymond's front door. And while the investigators were searching the home of this father and son, they said that they did find the weapon that was used. When the probable cause affidavit was released, some new details were revealed and Matthew's family did confirm to the investigators that Matthew sold substances and he would often post pictures on social media showing all these substances and a bunch of cash. They also said that Matthew had been shot before because of this. And you guys, I'm not going to put any of these videos in this video, but I have seen some of these videos and they are unbelievably alarming. These videos that I seen were ginormous amounts of substances. It is like not only illegal, wrong and all of these things, but also makes you a huge target. Now in a press conference, the San Antonio Police Department did confirm that Savannah, Matthew and Fabian, their baby were ended due to what they believed to be a drug deal gone bad. And this is where like people started talking about it and the rumors were going wild and people were zooming in on the security camera footage and saying that they really believed that there was a third person, but the investigators were saying that they didn't have any other persons of interest. But then on January 10th, Christopher's stepmom, okay, Raymond, the dad, the one that you've seen allegedly, that's allegedly him, it sure enough looks like him getting out of that truck. Raymond's girlfriend, they're not seemingly married, but by like common law, was arrested and she was also charged with this like abuse of a corpse and the altar and destroy of a human body and also tampering with evidence. It is shocking to see this woman too. There's video footage of her, you know, doing the perp walk and it's crazy like what went on in that house where the son, the stepmom and the daddy have been arrested. It is believed that the weapon that was used to end Savannah and Matthew's life actually belonged to the stepmom. Okay. Now remember, he said that Matthew brought it and he tried to wrestle it away from him and that it went off. Well, now they believe that the firearm that was used was hers. When the police questioned Myrta, which is the name of the stepmom on January 4th, she said that she did not remember what happened that evening and that she believed that she was sleeping when everything went down. However, the police were able to place her at the scene after the surveillance footage showed her returning back home in that same pickup truck with Christopher and Christopher's father. So they seen her getting out of the truck. So they knew she wasn't sleeping and that she was in that truck. What kind, what was going on in that truck? Now, remember how I told you guys the internet was going crazy saying there's a third person, there's a third person, there's a third person. Well, Myrta is believed to be the person who was seen in that footage. And it looks like she throws Raymond a towel. Y'all look at this. The police came out afterwards and said that they had an idea that there was a third person there, but they didn't have enough evidence at first, which is why she wasn't arrested at first. And so they were waiting for enough evidence to come out in order to arrest her. Now they are confident that there are no more suspects involved in this case. I have seen so much stuff online about this, which is honestly, as much as this has been requested, why it took me so long to do this video because I was sifting through all of these like theories and things that people thought happened and I don't know what happened. We're going to see what happened. I still don't, I can't put my, quite, quite put my finger on why Christopher and the parents, if they were involved, did this. But to me, it seems very obvious that this 
had to do with probably substances. And I just want to say, first of all, my heart hurts for Matthew's family and Savannah's family and even Fabian because he was a little boy. He was just getting ready to be born and he's really the victim and the most innocent person in all of this. However, you know, when you, when I look at photos of Matthew online with his family, he looks like he had a, like he had a good shot at life. He had, he had family that loved him and Savannah obviously had her family that loved her and why Matthew was so deep into this lifestyle and posting videos. And when I tell you guys of a lot of stuff, I'm talking about a buffet of substances. The stuff that I saw, I can't confirm it was really him allegedly, but the stuff that I saw with him, he was wearing the same necklaces, the same rings, and it was a lot. We're talking about bags and bags and bags and boxes of purple liquids, lean. So, I mean, just, just an, like a buffet of different things and, and wads of cash and posting these videos on these telegram apps to show people. And so it's very sad because unfortunately that lifestyle, it, it, it this is, these are the types of places where it brings, brings you. I do wonder though, what happened? Was this a deal gone wrong? Was this a robbery gone wrong? Was this a situation where the mom and dad needed a fix too? You know, the, the stepmom and the dad and the son, and they wanted more or, you know, what really happened at the end of the day, it's just, it's just, it's horrible. It's devastating and it's sad and none of it had to happen. And now at the end of this, three people are in jail and three people have left this world. And for what? Ugh. Have y'all heard about this case? Do y'all believe it was something more to this than, than everything that we talked about here in this video? Y'all let me know what you guys think down below. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I love you guys and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.